The body-wise person likes to learn by touching things. They also like to move around. What does it say here? Dramatize what they're learning. Which of you thinks you're body-wise? You know, I'll just mention this one as well, because this is about, as I told you, being good at words. You could call it being word-wise. What's the word up here on the poster? I can see that where it's practiced, what we want to achieve, that although we don't have a standard method, that where the work is based on our conceptual framework, you reach the individual child much more effectively. You help each child become much more active in relation to its own learning process. I find that even the younger children show lots of initiative and start different exercises all by themselves, and they start finding out which things they need to work with and what suits them. So, who else's presentation can we hear today? Carl Christian? I'd like to read my story. We look forward to hearing it. How much will you read for us? One page. How does a toad camouflage itself? Mm, I don't know yet. But that's what you're going to find out today. Mm. How will you do that? Uh, read something about it. You'll read about it? Yes. Have you found a book about camouflage in the collection over there? There, it's over there. No, I haven't. You haven't? Well, shall we try and find one at the library? But I've one in my bag. Bag? Fine. You go and fetch it then. Can you find out about rats? What would you do, Amelia? I'd go to the library and find a book about rats. You could do that, yes. What about something else, Christian? You could use internet, Google, and search for rats on Google. Yes? Have you used Google before? Yeah. What would you do, Carl, if it was up to you? Well, first of all, I'd go to the science centre and see if they had a stuffed rat. To learn how to learn also means that I support the natural curiosity that the children are born with, this sense of wondering that they've had for the first five or six years of their lives. All the things they wanted to examine when they were four years old, five years old, we want to give them the opportunity to do the same thing in school. The school isn't a place where you get answers. The school is a place where you can pose questions and find answers. Those of you who have a reading partner should sit with them now. There are lots of situations when the best thing is to gather all 25 children together. But there are definitely many, many more situations where it doesn't make sense. For example, where small teams work together and there are some who want to work alone if they really need to concentrate and improve their own understanding. But the old-fashioned teacher, the communicator, like a priest in church, where the class sits in rows staring into the back of the head in front, I call it bums on benches teaching. It doesn't work. It's history. That fits your reading brains. What about this? We've just talked about rats, so it might be a good idea to include this. Is it number two? Yes, that's the series. We create a framework for the children, and in that framework there are some must things, and there are some may things. And we explain to the children why the must things are there, what the goal is, how we're going to work towards it. The children might have some suggestions as to how they best can work. Some want to work alone, some with partners, some in groups. It's very different and depends on your learning system. We all have different methods when learning, which are optimal for us. Some children need peace and quiet around them. Others aren't disturbed by background noise. Some want to be absorbed in work for long periods of time, whilst others need to have things broken up into shorter periods. It's very individual. It has been a demanding task to readjust. There's nothing as difficult as a change of habits. 
The best type of teacher is the one who supports a lot of group and project-oriented work. A teacher who you don't just sit and listen to in a small classroom. It's a teacher who promotes a lot of discussion within the class and who doesn't just stand there explaining. You need that too, but discussion and group and project work is important. Ten years ago, when I started as a teacher, there was a lot, not only, but a lot of blackboard teaching. But now I spend very little time at the blackboard. I usually bring the children into the largest room we have, and we have many rooms now, where not everybody sits at a table. There I go through a few things at the blackboard, and then they disperse to work in groups with what we've just gone through. So the teacher's more like a consultant, a guide, than I was before. not an ED, but still you might say it's irregular. It's regular because it's, uh, it's, there's an ED added to the word. For instance, in English we sit a lot on the chairs down there and with the tables folded up. We move the tables around a lot and in that way it gets um, a little more imaginative.